Mr. Dante. Bye. Oh, Willie. Hmm? More. Another one? Well, some men play golf. Keep your meter running. You're liable to make a fortune. Mm, pay the man another quarter and let's go around again. I just love these roller coasters. Honey, I'm a working man. I'll call you in the morning on the telephone. Mm -hmm. Tommy, pay the cabbie and tell him to take the lady home. If a batty gets paid, I'd be glad to volunteer. Oh, you're just an apprentice, boy. Live and learn. What can I learn parking cars all night? That's how I got my start. But the cars I park don't have brunettes in them. Oh, patience. Patience. Good idea. Mr. Dancy. Hmm? Well, thank you, dear. What would I do without you? About as much as you do with me. You know, someday it might be fun to put this on you instead of take it off. Why, the ladies are restless tonight, aren't they? You sound just like Tommy the doorman. Have you met Tommy? He reminds me of my kid brother. Well, just a thought. Statement. Of course I showed up. If I hadn't, you'd be standing here talking to yourself. So what? I do it all the time. One tequila. Oh, I know you. No, 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 don't tell me. Let me guess. Dante. Willie Dante. Well, it's very nice to see you again. No, you haven't changed a bit. Well, what detained you, Willie? Blonde, brunette, or a traffic ticket? Or both. Or all three. Let's be imaginative. Why don't you two shut up? I don't know why I ever open up a place like this. A lovesick doorman, an ambitious hat check girl on the main floor at Olsen and Johnson. I should have stayed a trumpet player. Where did you play with it? Santa Anita? Why don't you go wait on the table? I shall do so, but first, if you can concentrate on business, there's a young lady in booth five. I think you should speak to her. Oh, kind of cute. I'll have to meet her. I'm not acting as a talent scout. Besides, the young lady is married. She came in alone. She wants to get in the back room. I'll go talk to her. She's from Texas. It's okay, I understand the language. I'll just walk over to the country. Hey! It was for me. Oh, I'm Willie Dante. I truly am sorry, sir. But not only am I a married woman, but I never do talk to strange men. Well, I won't say that I'm not a little strange at times, but one of my waiters said you wanted to get in the back room. I own the place. Oh, you're that Willie Dandy. There's more. Well, you never can tell. Since Stuart and I came to the city, I've met two men with the exact same names as folks we know back home. Isn't that remarkable? You seem like a gentleman, Mr. Dandy. And since you are the owner here, I'd consider it an honor if you'd be my guest and sit a spell at my table. Thank you. I do have a problem. You see, Stuart met some men at the hotel the first week we were here. And they're the nicest men. And they like to play cards and gamble. And Stuart likes to play cards and gamble. And Tell me, dear, these uh, two men your husband met at the hotel, uh, the ones who like to play cards, they're the same ones with the names like the folks back home? Why, yes. Johnny Smith and Bob Brown. How do you know that? Dear, about the only advice I can give you is to take Stuart by the hand and uh, tell him just one thing. Never gamble with strangers in a big city. You've never been in the big city before? Oh, no. And neither has Stuart. Oh, he was always too busy with the oil wells his father left him. Oh, you know how it is. One oil well comes in right after another, and you're always on the go. Hmm, that's rough. Um, well, I still hate to see two kids get hurt even in the crankcase. Oh, but Stuart doesn't gamble for money. It's for the sport. Well, then he should make sure he's playing with other sports. Tell me what you do. You bring Stuart over here tomorrow night, and you can learn while he plays. If he really likes to gamble, we'll at least give him an honest run for his money. I'll ask Stuart to come over tomorrow night. He just might say yes. Oh, you like Stuart. He's the smartest man. Say so you're here on your honeymoon? Yes. And your name was... Uh... Oh, Molly. Molly Edwards. Oh, well, Mrs. Edwards, I... You know, I'm Mrs. Baskin. I thought you said it was Edwards. You asked me what my name was. My maiden name was Edwards. Oh, well, pardon my slipping tits. Oh, it's really quite simple. I'm now Molly Baskin. I was Molly Edwards, see? Oh, yes. Before that, it was Friday Murphy. 
Well, I've been dying to meet you. <laughs> You're the funniest man. Well, dear, you bring Stuart over here tomorrow night, we'll all have hysterics together. Thank you so much. You're entirely welcome. Bye. Bye. Don't tell me you finally threw one back. Too small? Got a husband. Too big. No coffee. No coffee? No. Save it for her husband. I think he's coming in tomorrow night. I know. I can finish the joke, and you want to poison him. Mm -mm, mm -mm. No, I think you like your coffee. I really mean. Yeah? Yeah, he's in the oil business, and that stuff's pretty crude. I know. I hate myself for saying it. Willie. Hmm? I've been waiting an hour. Oh, I'm sorry, dear. I was tied up in a Texas stampede. Uh, why have you been waiting an hour for me? Don't you remember? You said we're going to go out on the town tonight. Oh, so I did. My name's Alice, remember? I told you last night. So you did. When we had the drink last night. Oh, so we did. Uh, just one question, Alice. Do you remember the Alamo? The what? Okay, you passed the test. Let's go out of the town. Hey, wait a minute. Well, you just got here. You can't leave now. Oh? You can't run a business like this. That's what the police have been telling me for years. Come on, Willie. Oh, the price one pays for being a lonely child. See you tomorrow night, Marty. Uh, good evening, Mickey. Hi. No lipstick smudges tonight? Well, we all have bad days. Tell me, dear, did a Mr. Baskin and his wife come in tonight? They're from Texas. I want you to meet my ever-loving Stuart. It's a real pleasure to meet you, Mr. Dandy. Any man my darling wife says is a nice man is a nice man in my book, and you can bet on that. I uh, take it you pump your oil by hand? <laughs> He's the cleverest man. I want you to meet my friends here, Mr. Smith and Mr. Brown. Well, those names are rather familiar. Uh, you're, uh, Smith? That's right. Funny, uh, I once knew a man looked a great deal like you. His name was Dan Flick. They called him Flicker because he was so quick with a deck of cards. Well, now, ain't that a coincidence? Mr. Smith here can deal cards like nobody's business. Nobody's business? I thought everybody had a business. What is your business, Mr. Smith? I import fish. I see. Sharks? You know, they didn't even want to come along tonight. We were all set to play another game back at the hotel. But I said, boys, we can play later on. Right now, we got to meet this man my ever-loving says is so nice. <laughs> of course, we can only stay a while. Yeah, I'm glad you came by. Give this card to the uh, man on the door, and I'll be there in a little while. Well, we're much obliged to you, Mr. Danny. Yes, we're much obliged. As Mr. Baskin says, we can't stay long. No, I, I know, yes, your business. The fish will spoil if it isn't taken care of right away, is that it? Oh, he ain't working tonight, but we got our card game scheduled. I know, yes. Well, go back and take a look around. Nice meeting you. Yes, sir. Oh, sorry, I forgot. I'm dealing tonight. <laughs> You too. Oh, you're on time tonight. Yeah, I'm not well. Say, you're right. Her husband is big. Those his brothers with him? You know, a couple of con men. What are they doing with a young couple? We got a fish on the line. Hmm? Speaking of fish, get a hold of Jackson. Tell him I want to see him right away. Okay. What's the matter? When they let you guys in the door? Try sliding under the crack. We waited out here to have a word with you. All right, I'll give you the word. Goodbye. Well, let's pick on somebody your own size. Or don't you know I want small enough? Don't get smart, Willie. He's our sucker. We found him. Played him along slow, and tonight we plan to really take him. Stay here for an hour, then we'll go over to our game. Don't try to keep them here any longer. Is that a threat, mister? It is. Show him what I mean, Barney. <laughs> Don't get any ideas, Willie. You rough us up and we tip the police about you having this back room open again. Figure you'd rather leave us alone than pay a big fine. Come on. Been drinking Monty's coffee? No, oh, Jackson, I got some playmates here tonight. I just got belted. Anyone I know? Dan Flick. Never met the gentleman. Oh, good. And he doesn't know you. Maybe you can help. Help? 
Flick decided to play rough, all right, we'll play rough. But my way, slow but sure. Come on. Eleven, the winner. Hey, lucky line. Your line wins. Twenty-four, black. Well, having a luck? Not bad, not bad at all. Stuart's so smart. Twice he's bet on the number that little ball dropped on. If he wins enough, does he get to take a turn at the wheel and spin the ball? Honey, if he wins enough, he wins the wheel. Let him spin it all he wants. Oh, I just don't understand this game. I'm afraid maybe you've forgotten about it, Mr. Dante. No, oh, no, no, not at all. I, uh, sorry I couldn't get back earlier. I just, uh, had a stomach ache. Hmm. Too bad. Do you feel all right now? Oh, yes, yes. Fine, thank you. It came on me suddenly. Very suddenly. Those things can be dangerous. True, yes. And it could be something contagious. Who knows? I may give you the same thing I had. Well, come on now. Let's not yak. Let's play. Give me a lucky number, honey. Take uh, our wedding date, the 21st. Bet on 21. All right. Lose your seven, seven away. 19 red. Oh, it didn't win. Now, don't you fret, honey. We'll just keep playing it till it does win. You better not, Stu. We have to get back to the hotel for our game, remember? Well, I can't have my darling feeling bad. It'll come up soon, just you see. It's love. Oh, excuse me. Oh, well, Mr. Jackson, welcome back again, sir. Oh, good evening, William. How was Europe? European. Really nice to have you with us. How's your luck these days? Well, I don't really know. I haven't played for so long. Let's test. Uh, 5,000 on the red. You're on. That's 17 black. Yes, I am a bit rusty. Now, or shall I settle later? Oh, no, let's make it later. Why don't we run over to the blackjack table? You always did prefer cards. It's the only real sport. Would you excuse us a moment, please? Yes. You just go right ahead, Mr. Daddy. I'm still going to wait on 21 to come up. Good luck. I hope you gentlemen brought your sleeping bags. This way, Mr. Jackson. Place your bets, ladies and gentlemen. Place your bets. Eight upon eight, now the two fours, the hard way. How was that? Perfect example of the idle rich. My former self. Oh, to be rich again, and idle, but a waiter is neither. Stop complaining. Just stay here and play blackjack with Sam and act like you're spending a lot. Gladly with your money, but I get to keep what I win. I'm safe. You never win. Do anyone come up yet? No, not yet. I'll just keep trying. No, we will. Tommy, oh, see these two boys here watching the roulette. I'm coming to my office. Come in. Keep an eye on Texas. What's on your mind, Daddy? Business. Not hard to discuss. You stay out of ours, and we'll stay out of yours. You've got a pigeon that Texan all set for the kill. And I got a pigeon, too. Did you notice the Englishman in the back room? Yeah. Name's Jackson. He's loaded. Doesn't mind losing. So? Well, I like to make a fast buck as well as the next guy, but I can't fleece Jackson here. It's bad publicity. I figure if we throw in together, we can take Jackson and the Texan, both in the same night. One night's work, we split a small fortune. You say the Englishman's really got a pile. Would I have anything to do with him if you didn't? You know, there are not many fellows I'd throw in with, but you've got a talented dealing arm that uh, I've got a lot of respect for. What do you say? Uh, we figure we can get 25000 out of the Texan. What about your sucker? Oh, at least that, maybe double. Sounds okay. How do we work it? You tell the Texan you're going back to your hotel to wait for him. I'll steer Jackson over and we'll take him. We don't want him together. Suppose the Texan comes over first. He won't. He said he was going to play 21 until it came up. I'll instruct my man to not let 21 win until we're good and ready. Sounds good. I'll get Barney and meet you at the Hotel Fairmont. It's room uh, 612. Okay, I'll have Jackson over there in half an hour. No uh, hard feelings about the rough stuff earlier? <laughs> yeah, it's all part of the game, you know that? See at the frame up. Okay. Who's that a wall though, please? Out? 
No, no. No, I'll call later, thanks. How's your memory? Good as ever. Oh, that's terrible, but try to remember this. Fairmont Hotel, room 612. Got it? Got it. Keep it. Sure you can spare it? No, I'll get fresh. You know that suit of clothes you like so well? Oh, you mean the checks? I'm not sure it's so loud it blinds me, but whatever it is, wear it. And meet me, room 612, Fairmont Hotel, in half an hour. Why? Now, there you go asking questions again. I got a curious mind. You certainly have, scant. Hello, Ed. You see that Texan by the roulette table? The one with the girl. Yeah, Willie. Tell Charlie to wait 10 minutes and then let number 21 win. That's right. Oh, and uh, send Jackson out to my car, will you? So he's winning. Prime loose and send him out. You know, I still don't like cutting Danny in on this. Why not? The Englishman's his setup. Well, we could have done okay with just the Texan. Now we got to split what we take them both for. Says who? Huh? Well, he said we'd split. I didn't. We take his sucker, then our sucker, then we make a sucker out of Willie. Oh, I get it. You know, I'm beginning to like the idea. That must be Danny. And the money man. Well, uh, right on time. All right, sir. Mr. Smith, meet Mr. Jackson. How do you do, sir? Great pleasure. Well, the pleasure is mine, sir. That is, if you can provide my sporting blood with a little excitement. Yes, I've heard you're uh, quite a gambler. It's my friend, Mr. Brown. Oh, excellent. A foursome. Shall we uh, get started? Oh, let's start with the cigarette first. Well, what do you know? I'm fresh out. Do you mind if I buy one of yours, Smith? Hey, my cigarettes are on the table. Yeah, I know. What is this, a lighter? Good heaven. Let's put the toys away and get on with the game. <laughs> no hurry. Open the door, Jackson. What is this? Catch, Monty. Hey, that's dangerous. Just see that Mr. Flick here doesn't get frisky. What's going on here, Dante? Oh, we're all set up for a poker game, so we'll have one. Monty, Jackson, the Texan, and me. He should be here in a minute. So that's it. You're cutting us out so you can fleece Baskin all by yourself. That's right. But you and Brown won't see it. You'll be in the closet. Jackson, tear up a sheet and tie up these two characters. I'll explain the situation to Marty before Baskin gets here. I wish you would. I'm a little confused. That is the understatement of the year. Uh, tear up a sheet, will you? I do hope you two gentlemen won't be too uncomfortable in the closet, but this little Texas boy who wants to be a gambler has got to learn a lesson. <laughs> But I hate cigars. Go on, smoke it, and don't forget your lines. I'll get it. You sit down. Oh, sorry I'm late, Mr. Danny, but I dropped Molly off at the room. She's had enough gambling for one night. Well, poker's a man's game anyway. It can get pretty rough at times. Where's well, Mr. Smith and Mr. Brown? Oh, sorry, they got all tied up. But they told us to go on without them. By the way, have you met Mr. Jackson? Oh, no, but I've seen him at your place. Howdy. My pleasure, sir. I've always loved people from Texas. They get a little quarrelsome at times, but I do admire a man who can die with his boots on, so to speak. <laughs> you get what I mean. <laughs> yeah, sure. All right, you mugs, cut out the chatter and lay out the scratch. Well, this is Shoulders Monty from Chicago, sir. Howdy. Hi. Right. Well, seems like I've seen you somewhere before, too. You ever been in Q? Q? Uh, San Quentin. Shoulders vacations there every season or so. He does. Well, shall we get started? Nothing like a fun little card game between pals. Uh, well, I... You know, uh, we don't invite everybody to play with us here. But I spotted you as a real gambler the minute I laid eyes on you. You did? I sure did. Sit down. Hey, your chips, Bob. How much are they? Oh, don't worry about that. We'll figure that out later. All right, Slippery. You deal. My pleasure. Well, don't we cut for deal? Sounds fun. Who do we cut? Now, put that thing away. He's only joking, Slippery. Go ahead with the deal. Oh, uh, Mr. Dandy, are you sure Mr. Smith and Mr. Brown won't be back? Uh, I mean, I, I promised I'd play with them. Oh, they won't mind. After all, we're friends. Say, by the way, Shoulders, uh, you and uh, Smith were cellmates at one time, weren't you? Yeah, we both got five on that Philly heist. I knew Smith well. Do you remember that terrible boar who accused me of cheating? Well, Smith helped me take care of the argument with the dear fellow. May he rest in peace. Pick up the cards. Uh, oh, yeah, sure. Can 
you open? Oh, Mr. Danny, I just remembered something. M my little wife, Molly, uh, asked me tonight if we couldn't go to Niagara Falls on our honeymoon. And, and Well, you know how I hate to have my darling feeling bad. What's that got to do with opening? Well, gentlemen, I, I thought I just might go get Molly to pack up and we'd take a train to Niagara. Splendid idea. Right after the game. Sure, sure. You won't find sports like us in Niagara Falls. Go ahead and enjoy yourself. Well, I think maybe I'll... Sit down. I'll well, open. Or ten. Oh, it's getting hot in here. Now, shoulders, you promised there wouldn't be any trouble. Oh, this is going to be a nice, friendly game. But I didn't know he was going to be here. And what do you mean by that? Whatever you want, All right, me. well... All right, boys, boys, boys. Down. Sit down. On the table. You two, on the table. Uh... Now remember, boys, no trouble for at least the first hour. First hour? You can't expect to keep tempers down all night. Well, but Mr. Dandy, gentlemen, I... Well, I, I don't want to sound unfriendly, but... Well, my little wife wants to go to Niagara and... Uh, well, now, I don't want you to take offense, but... Well, <laughs> you know how women are. <laughs> She's been right all along, and... I, well... <laughs> maybe... Maybe some other time. Uh, what I mean is, well... If you're ever... Ever down Texas way, well, be sure and... Be sure and see the Rio Grande. It's... It's awful big. Hi. Hi. Tommy. Well, it's a little breeze, Lieutenant Waldo. How are you, Willie? Fine. Say, you know you ought to spend more time in your office. I've been trying to call you all evening. Really? Mm -hmm. Yeah, really. Got a big surprise for you. Dan Flick and Barney Todd all tied up and waiting for you. Fairmount Hotel, room 612. Well, I'm much obliged. I appreciate that. I thought you would, yeah. I've got a surprise for you, too, Willie. Yeah? Yeah, when you called me in my office, I was out on a case. A pretty routine case, but I do enjoy it. Oh, yeah. Put it in the truck with the other equipment, boys. Oh, no. Easiest way to ever pulled on you, Willie. You were slipping. But it's unfair. I wasn't here. Tell it to the judge. All this because a gal from Texas wanted to be a good wife. You know, you just might not be able to convict me this time. I think I'll plead insanity. Come on, Willie. Leave us drive to the station. Oh, how rough can it get? Excuse me. 